Hey, what's up? The Electron Octatrack is great for so many reasons, but I'm finding more and more that it's just a great central hub for my studio, and not even in the way that I'm using it to control everything I have, because it can do that, and very well. But I'm kind of using it as a central brain, or idea hub, where all of the little snippets and ideas I have kind of gravitate toward. As usual, I'm going to show you a beat I have in progress and kind of explain how it came to be, and more importantly, why this only could have really happened with the Octatrack. Cool. So as you can see, I've set up some different scenes, playing around with the crossfader, working on some transitions, but it's just primarily based around this one beat that I created. And we're going to start from the beginning, which is this sample. So a bit of a story on this sample, it actually came from a digitone pattern that makes up the melodic components of a song that I plan to release soon. And I ran that through the therme. But in the actual song performance, the digitact is controlling the digitone, and it is the master for tempo. But I was messing around with the digitone through the therme. Digitone was standalone. It didn't have all the sync settings from the project of the digitact. So the pattern was playing back at a totally different rhythm. And just coming from the digitone, it sounds like this. I have the digitone off screen. And I had that running through the therme, fully wet. The mix was all the way up, pitch shifting up a perfect fifth and then down an octave, creating its own sequence at a super slow speed, which is where you get all of that nice aliasing. I have this assigned to track four. I just sampled it through the recording buffer and then I placed trigs down to jump in at various points of the sample. And I also changed the pattern length. So here we basically have three and a half pages. We're still looking at that digitone and thermite sample here. And here is the turnaround. So it gives us a bit of a unique, interesting meter. Back to the sample, I'm gonna take a look at the LFO page because what I've done here is I've assigned an LFO to the dark reverb mix. So the reverb is all the way up here. And I have the LFO pumping the mix of that with an inverse triangle wave, basically to a half note. So that reverb is pumping in and out. It's an interesting sidechain effect that is automating the reverb signal only. One of my favorite things to do on the Octatrack. And it's really great that with the LFOs, you can send different waveforms to different components and parameters of the individual effects. So let's move on to the percussion. And I'm just gonna really quickly play the kick and hi-hat pattern for you. Look at that. Great, simple kick pattern. And let's talk a little bit more about the hi-hat pattern. So I'm not using any LFOs here, but you can probably hear that there's some stuff going on. And you can also probably notice that all of these red trigs I have are all blinking yellow. And that just means that I've automated a parameter using uh, you know, the, the knob corresponding to various parameters as the pattern was playing. And the three parameters that I have altered are 
attack, volume, as you can see, these are all in different settings, and the delay send. So you can hear that delay parameter coming in, fading out every so often. And then apart from our actual sample with the theremin and the digitone, what gives this piece its character is this drum part. I'm just gonna let it play through and let you watch the trigs. So this is super interesting. I initially started this off as a snare track. So here's that snare. And I've, as you can see, parameter locked the mix of the dark reverb on some of the hits. And I've done this throughout the pattern, but there are so many other samples that I have trig locked here. So for example, this, which is a single hit that I have retrigged. And then here's the single hit without a retrig, more retrigs. So we have these clicks and clacks mixed in with the snare part. And my favorite part is this loop assigned to trig nine. That is a, it's a drum loop from a blank form sample pack. I believe it's beats two. And that's the loop. But what I've done is I've kind of chopped it up and assigned it to these trigs. But I've also trig locked different values of reverb mix throughout. So you can kind of hear. The reverb come in and out. And then here I have parameter lock some hi hats. Also with various amounts of trig lock, panning, pitch, filtering. So I really approach this percussion track the same way I would on something like the Digitone where you have to just use one track to try to jam in as much percussion as possible. And along with that, I decided to just go crazy with parameter locking various values of these trigs. And I honestly just love how it came out. And there's the one. Now I want to talk you through some of the scenes we have set up. So scene nine, all I've done here is on my percussion parts, I've pitched down the hi-hats and I've pitched up the percussion track on track two. So I can do this. Just for the little, little changes and transitions. Super simple, but super fun. And I've also bumped the Q up a little bit on our melodic sample. Scene 10 is a bit more obvious. High pass filter. And I've cranked the reverb mix and uh, you know drastically adjusted some of the reverb settings for our percussion track. which is really great for little drops wherever you want to put them in and kind of gives you the opportunity to play around and improv and find some different rhythms within the rhythms, as they say. And finally, this scene where we only have our Digitone and Therme sample being affected. And all I've done here is played with the pitch, the rate, 
the retrig, and the retrig timing. So if we want to just grab one of our trigs, it gets really glitchy. But one of the coolest parts, in my opinion, is how the crossfader works. Because when you set a parameter on the B side of the crossfader, it basically assigns a spectrum of values through the length of the crossfader on all the settings that you've adjusted. So in between A and B, we're going to get all of the values between default and an octave up per pitch, all of the values between a full 100% forward rate and a 100% backward rate, and same with the retrig. So we can get some weird juicy ambient stuff. That would be super fun to sample elsewhere or just brood in. So we're still going forwards here with the rate, but we're pitching down. And this at the middle is gonna be close toward like an absolute standstill. And as we go toward the right on scene B, we're going to be playing backwards and further increasing the pitch until we're at an octave up. So we can get pretty weird. Put ourselves somewhere here. So yeah, really a lot of fun to play around with, almost in a way that makes it hard to actually be productive with anything, because there's just so much you can play with in terms of the simplest pattern. But yeah, the Octatrack has really been great. And the inherent workflow of the, the slicing and the chopping, and the fact that I have all of these inputs and outputs in here already means I can kind of just plug in whatever devices I'm using at the time, and really quickly take a sample that is decidedly so different from what it's going to turn into. And honestly, that's one of my favorite things about the Octatrack is that I never know what I'm going to come up with. I can have an idea and a direction, but it kind of just urges you to do certain things that you don't even necessarily expect it to. It's always a great time. It feels very performable. It feels very interactive. And this thing's old. I think it's still super special and unique despite its quirks and things that people hate about it. I absolutely love it. So yeah, if you have an Octatrack and you haven't used it in a while, just throw some weird samples in there and see what you come up with. I always joke that I love to ruin pretty ambient music with drums and I have to say I think I did a pretty great job of that here like this track just makes me laugh Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the song and hopefully learned something too. If you're interested in supporting the channel in any way, definitely go check out my Patreon. There are a bunch of cool perks there, and you can even sign up for lessons with me on the Octatrack, Digatact, Digatone, and loads of other stuff. And if you ever want to just drop a line, best way to find me is on Instagram, at slowhaste. So yeah, enjoy the rainy fall weather, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.